Hi, this is David of Monarch Turtle. Welcome to video 8D, which is the fourth of five devoted to the part two topic of risk management and investment management in the 2012 FRM. That means that we're looking at three chapters here that are signed from Stahl's textbook on investment banks, hedge funds, and private equity, two chapters on hedge fund strategies, and one chapter on an overview of private equity. Spreadsheet 8D1 is not uploaded yet, will be in a few weeks. Just wanted to share that I have an intent to upload a spreadsheet that um, illustrates some of the strategy payoffs for the hedge funds. Chapter 11 is Overview of Hedge Funds. And where the aim asks us to differentiate between hedge funds and mutual funds along some of these key dimensions. So the fee structure is a big one. In the uh, typical hedge fund, it's what's known as 2 and 20. There's a 2% management fee on assets under management. And then a performance fee, typically 20% of the increase in net asset value. Now that can, that can change some of the top tier hedge funds have been known to uh, uh, earn performance fees of 25% or even 30%, I think. So in the case of a mutual fund, Stahl saying it's not quite the same. There's only a management fee, no, no performance fee. A key difference in terms of the performance intent is that hedge funds um, on in, oftentimes promote as absolute return strategies um, so much so that some people use absolute returns as synonymous for the hedge fund category. Whereas mutual funds traditionally have benchmarked or have uh, measured their performance relative to a benchmark. And so they've been relative performance. So classically, we would have a mutual fund that gauges performance relative to the S&P 500. So the thing about relative performance is that if the S&P go, if the S&P 500 index goes down, loses, say, 10% in a year, the mutual fund that loses only 8% still outperforms on a relative basis. Okay, in terms of regulation then, although it's fairly dynamic, changing over time in regard to the hedge funds, and lately in the wake of the financial crisis, um, Although arguably misguided, some of these, some of the, uh, regulations have been changing in terms of the hedge funds. But traditionally, this, uh, one of the definitions of the hedge fund was that it, uh, they were subjected to fewer government regulations and the mutual funds were governed by many more regulations. So that's consistent just thematically with the ideas that hedge funds are, are have more, are more liberal in the sense of uh, less oversight, but also also uh, more permission to employ leverage derivatives and short selling. These three right here are pretty textbook. When we say, what what's the definition of hedge funds? In some classic questions, you would get three aspects to hedge funds, that they can employ leverage, that they can use derivatives, and that they're liberated to short sell. Now, it, these, the uses, it, that doesn't mean that a hedge fund uses all three of these. It really uh, is a function more of the hedge fund's strategy. Then the investors in hedge funds would tend to be high net worth individ, in, investors and institutions, whereas mutual funds tend to attract all type of investors, including retail. So we tend not to associate retail investors with hedge funds, but with mutual funds. And so the hedge funds use direct forms of leverage and then also indirect forms of leverage. So direct forms of leverage include bank, bank borrowing and then importantly, the repurchase agreements. Indirect forms of leverage include short selling and off balance sheet leverage. And then Stahl makes the point that the growth from 1990 to 2007 for the hedge fund category as a whole was really dramatic due to several factors that they offered theoretical diversification benefits, that there's, that the, the idea of absolute returns is attractive.